Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and uh, today we're going to be working on a pair of R.O.M. Williams. Nothing too fancy, just some protective soles and new heels. So if you want to watch a simple video, this one might be perfect for you. It's got some fine little details in there that we'll mention as well. But come join us and check it out. Thanks everyone for joining us. So, like I mentioned, we're gonna be working on these RM Williams here. It's a awesome Australian made boot that's uh, got almost like a cult following, turns out. I did a video a while ago where I put a day night sole on a pair of these, and man, did I get hammered away by a, lo by a lot of those guys that love these boots, and uh, it wasn't fun. But this gentleman here is doing nothing too fancy. He wanted to get the uh, Vibram sole protectors these guys here and the matching heels to them this is the vibram explosion and he doesn't quite need new heels but he did want them to match um, plus it seems like the vibram is a little bit of a denser rubber than the original factory one so it'll last a little bit longer for him and then the uh, sole protectors here will give him some nice grip and traction on those guys but uh, first things first let me oh i got the tape here i'm gonna go ahead and uh tape this because we want to mark where it's going to go and everything. I'll give this gentleman a little bit of a shout out because he actually works, if you see the bottle here, at Stranahan's. And he dropped off this bottle and yes, it's almost empty. Don't judge. I didn't drink it all. We don't drink on the job. We have that cigar lounge a few doors down where we did uh, that live stream with Janelle with over there. Um, Marcus and I, have, we've done a live stream in there before, I think on Facebook it was in one of the groups. And uh, yeah, we like to go there on Saturdays and just hang out after work, have a cigar or a couple of drinks. And this was after a handful of people joined in and uh, had a sip here and there. So that's what happens. We have people that are finally relaxing at the start of the weekend. But first thing with these uh, partic particular soles here, uh, they are after all molded and everything. And so sometimes they have like these little edges right here that are kind of sticking out. And mainly the worst one is the one down here that we have to clip off as straight as possible. And we just kind of follow the original line of the mold. There we go. Looks a little bit better because you can see right here on this one it's uneven and now it's a little more even. Okay, and I want to make sure everything is centered as much as possible. It's more of an aesthetics thing. There's nothing too crazy that we have to center due to the tread pattern. It's more of just the aesthetics on these. Add a pen. And for those of you who may be wondering, say, about the sole protectors, like which one might be better or anything, there really isn't one that's better than the other. There are some that are thicker, so they'll have longer wear, some that are made out of a certain material that's a little more grippy, some have a particular tread pattern. This is kind of a standard material uh, that they use on a number of their standard protective soles from Vibram. And it's going to give you great grip and durability, but it's not going to be as grippy as some of the heavier treaded ones as well. So. You don't have to keep asking me which one I think is better. It's to each his own. It depends on where you're gonna be wearing them, the environment and all that kind of stuff. But we do these a lot like the Louboutins as well. So we mark it with the tape and then we take a razor and split it down. A perfect 90 degree angle. Now, some of my videos you may have seen me, let's say like the Lou Vuitton, Jimmy Choo's, um, a lot of the high fashion shoes and boots where we end up taping up all around here as well around the edges. 
Now we do that typically on something that's more low profile. Sorry, got interrupted with a phone call. But anyways, so we tape off the edges typically on the low profile sole, something a little bit thinner, like say these guys here where the sole is super thin. Well, thicker soles, we don't have to necessarily. So, got that. Go ahead and peel up the tape there. Just rip it off right where the line is. Now, the goal with these, obviously because they are Goodyear welted, they're stitched around. Uh, good thing it's channeled stitch, that means the stitches are sitting inside a channel, so we try to avoid cutting through the stitches as much as possible. Um, now, there is a version where we can stitch on a thicker sole in some cases, um, we can also restitch the leather sole and everything, but that does take a lot more work. And typically the stitches are an additional reinforcement. It's not what the shoe primarily relies on on keeping its sole on, basically. All right, so I got interrupted there a little bit, but yep, our goal is to make sure that we try not uh, damaging the stitches too much. Well, I think this blade is starting to get a little worn. Yeah, let you guys see what it looks like. So, in order to get that perfect 90 degree angle cut, we have to do this. Definitely have to flip this blade around. Actually, get a fresh new blade. And any time that we do, say, accidentally sand through or cut through any of the stitches, we're going to reinforce them with an adhesive anyways. So they don't come undone. It's definitely some tougher leather to work with compared to, say, some of those uh, high fashion shoes like Louis Vuitton. And uh, I'm spacing out on all the brands for some reason today. Pretty cool though, this gentleman whose boots these are. He's gonna give us a tour of Stranahan's and stuff. We're gonna check out the distillery and see how how their whiskeys are made. It's a old trade just like our industry. Just a lot of controversy, con controversy years ago when it came to alcohol, but it was still around for a very long time. This thing just does not want to cut the same. So, it took a minute, but got it all cut and everything. And the rest of the sole we basically grind and sand up so that it kind of roughs it all up and everything so we have a surface area to, to where we can adhere to. And we try to get as close as we can to those stitches, preferably without actually cutting into the stitches or sanding into them. Um, but again, like I mentioned, any spots that we do nick a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and reinforce. If that does happen, I'll be sure to show you guys. But for the time being, I am gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other boot. Grab my pliers here, pull off this sole. And this arm William heel is very, very rubbery. It's not a bad thing, but that does mean it's a little bit on the softer side. So durability wise, 
might not last quite as long, so these Vibrams are going to be a little bit of an upgrade. And then once I get this thing off, I'll show you what's going on underneath real quick. So you can see how flexible this is right here. That's the heel for these ones. Can't exactly bend them all that well. That means they're using a little bit of a denser rubber in the new heels. Now as far as the heel bases, they are a leather stacked heel base here. And you can see all these little nails and stuff sticking out here. This is from when they re, uh, when they attached the heel base from the inside underneath the in insole here, or the little heel pad that they put there. And these nails, they kind of pop through. So we obviously need to clip them. They have little to no functionality when it comes to going through these top lifts here at all, even though it's from the factory. If anything, I've come across them being a little bit more problematic because as you can tell, they're sharp. And since this is a soft rubber heel, if you wear down the rubber a little bit quicker than the metal wears down, which usually is what happens, you end up with a uh, kind of a sharp corner there from these nails that are sticking out if they're a little bit further out on these edges, or if you manage to wear them out right there. They are more in the center, but you never know. And if that happens, uh, your hardwood floors will definitely get scratched up pretty badly. So I'm gonna grab some other pliers for clipping and just to get it all going because the rest of the way it's gonna be sanded off. But I'm just gonna clip off the very tips. And they kind of shoot all over the place, but it's a cobbler shop. We got nails and everything all over the place. So at this point, we're all done with this one. We're gonna run it over to the sander, but first I'll take care of that one. And we'll see you back here in just a little bit. Oh, one other thing I'll mention during the sanding process, because I'm trying to talk during the sanding process with the machines, we're going to rough these up. The uh, protective soles here, they do have a really smooth edge that hasn't been roughed up, so i got to make sure that's all rough. And uh, rougher surfaces tend to adhere a lot better. So we'll see you back in just a few. All right, everyone. So we've got everything sanded up. And I'll just kind of give you an idea. So we didn't really hit the stitches all that much. There's, you can see one little piece there. Um, most of that right here is covered up by the leather being folded over. So it's actually not through the stitches that we got into all these areas here. Um, but I'll still show you guys a little bit of the reinforcing that usually goes into it. So mainly like right here, there's a little bit more fraying, I guess you can call it. But the stitches weren't actually completely damaged or anything. Again, um, the stitches are kind of like a secondary reinforcement. Um, but since it's going to be a protective sole, it's going to really protect it for a while. Um, but for now, what I'm doing, I'm grabbing some sandpaper here by hand and kind of roughing up right there where we cut it a little bit and evening it out because when I cut it, I cut it at quite a bit of an angle and I try not getting it too close with the machine just in case because the sanders, although it looks like it has a straight edge on the corner, no matter how good of a cobbler you are, it's still slightly rounded at the very end. Um, you might be able to see there's a little lump right here so that's where the sander is, but right past that, it's like almost like a little mound, is where I cut it. So I want to make sure I even that out, and I got to do that by hand just a little bit. Plus it helps rough up that area where I cut it as well, because obviously a knife just cuts it and leaves kind of like a smooth, uh, smooth edge, in other words. Looks 
like this one might be just a tad bit larger. So a few areas I might just slightly chisel it away with a knife. Make sure that it's all nice and even. Now this is one of those things that cutting protective soles. There's quite a few great cobblers around the world that do this, but like for us here in Colorado, every single cobbler that's ever seen me do this, they think I'm insane for doing it. They're like, are you crazy? I actually tried to show my father how to do this as well with, um, oh, hang on just a second. Sorry, the mailman was coming in. But where was I? Oh yeah, I tried to show him my uh, dad because he still has a cobbler shop not far, well, a little ways away from me, but not too far at one point. And uh, he's like, no, I will not do that. So for the Denver cobbler scene, or all Colorado cobbler scene, I'm an oddball. Amongst other cobblers, however, we try to outshine each other. <sighs> Who can outdo each other with the most perfect cut, basically? Even with the uh, toe plates here, these uh, Triumph ones and the stainless steel Lulu plate ones, all the cobblers are posting and, and a lot of the cobbler groups on Facebook, they're... Some of them are kind of exclusive just for cobblers, so if you're not in the industry, you won't be able to get on. But kind of trying to show off to each other, in other words. And then we also, you know, criticize each other sometimes, like a good amount. So, oh shoot, I didn't show you guys the uh, stitch repair. But again, we don't really need to do much on this at all, but I still got to show you guys at least. I didn't cut through or sand through any of the actual stitches too much. Let me just throw some glue on here because it's a little bit too late for at least this boot. Now, as far as the uh, tape, I will leave that on because it makes it easier because I'll run through it with, uh, with some glue. And that way, when I peel off the tape right before I stick the sole on there, there's no uh, glue residue or at least minimal. Hang this up behind here on a nail. But, okay. I'll show you real quick. We've got this stuff here. It's uh, it's like a super glue, but it's super thin. Like, very thin. And we just go through like this. You can see a few of the spots. Let me re-angle this just a little bit. But you can see some of those wet spots there. You can't put too much on there. It's just a, just a tiny smidge, basically. But that's what we end up doing to reinforce the stitches. Um, because almost all, and I mean almost all, there's a few that are cotton. But these are nylon stitches majority of the time. And they have a chemical reaction occur with them with this glue. Where it actually sometimes smokes up or gets really hot. And it basically binds everything very, very strongly. So... Thought I'd show that to all of you real quick. So if the stitches do get damaged, and again, don't be too concerned about it. We're still going to do a little bit of reinforcement anyways. So thought I'd just show everybody what that looks like. But anyways, um, back to what I'm doing. All right, I'm just going to glue everything up here. Let the first coat dry. Then we'll put on a second coat. Usually the first coat acts as a primer and it gets soaked in quite a bit and gives us kind of a base to work off of. And then the second coat is what actually works. So I'll get the uh, soles going and glue those up as well. And then we'll let everything dry for a little bit. And then when it's time to stick everything together, we'll be back then for that. All right, everyone. So it's time to stick these guys together. We're gonna Let's take them and then let them cure overnight. But right now, let's go ahead and peel off the tape carefully. Voila. Now it's nice and clean. Minimal tape there. I got the sole protector in the oven. Now, some soles we stick in the oven 
and some we don't and I learned that the hard way those uh, mirror gloss red bottoms that we use a lot of times they don't go in the oven <laughs> they uh, are made out of a different type of rubber where it melts like bad so these however are different so they can go right in the oven heat up nicely So while it's warm, let me switch out the heel here. I'm gonna stick this in the oven, or in the oven, on the press. And there is that Vibram logo that I wanna make sure I get on there as best I can. So I'm gonna move that heel up a little bit. Sometimes we cut the heel a little bit beforehand, but you can see right there how much I moved it up because of the Vibram logo. My goal is to try to make sure that's as center as possible. But I gotta run this to the press now. At this point, we're just gonna let this cure overnight, and then tomorrow morning I can come in and continue on with them. So we'll see you guys back in a few seconds for you, and for me it'll be tomorrow morning. So we'll see you later. All right, everyone. So we're back here again. It's uh, next day already, and I've gone ahead now this morning and cut off the extra around the edges here uh, with our five and one. But now it's time to go ahead and trim it a little bit closer with a hook blade like this. So, oh, I thought he was talking to me, but so with the hook blade, this is for some reason a kind of relaxing part for me. Now, a lot of times I'll do this when the material is still kind of warm, but since this is a bit of a stiffer sole, well, the leather stiff sole, I could do it just fine one's cooled off as well because with a thin sole what happens is sometimes when you cut it and if it's already cooled off um you either have to have a really fresh blade blade and take your time but other times uh if you're doing it a little bit too quickly and your blade's a little dull you'll start pulling on the original sole because the heat transferred over still where on a boot like this where it's a thicker sole makes no difference but so the protective sole is easy now the heel however is a little harder because as you can tell there's quite a gap this heel comes in just one size so we have to cut it down um, typically oh, sorry about the bell but typically we usually uh, pre-cut these heels where they need to go I didn't do that I, I don't know what I was thinking I was like oh, they'll just fit and forgot that I should probably pre-cut it a little bit but not a problem. I'll just have to do two cuts here. First one is to take a good bulk of it off. But because it's a thicker piece of material, it takes a little bit a little bit more effort. There we go. Ah, there we go. Alright. Now get a little bit closer. Obviously, a lot of this will get sanded out as well, but it's going to take a little while to sand through it. First, just having to cut some of it off. And it looks like we might have to do a third time. You making a video? Yeah. I was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I'm crazy. You've been thinking I've been talking to you all day. <laughs> I've gone crazy. <laughs> That's like the fourth time today you thought I was talking to you. Alright, but there you go. Got it all cut up, so now we're going to switch over to the sander. But what I did notice, real quick, touch up a few spots for this gentleman. There's a few little frayed areas here that are sticking up like that. I'm just going to take a lighter real quick to it and just run it across. And it's going to melt that. Sometimes when we spot things like that, We'll run a lighter through it see right there it's kind of fuzzy looking just take a lighter to it majority of the time it'll help melt those little threads that are sticking out see so even right here on the very corner just a little bit there there we go so we'll run over to the sander and continue on with these
All right, everyone. So at this point, we got to do the edges. You saw me hit the inside a little bit to even everything out. I'd gone through and actually sanded all, all around, even the areas like under here and here, uh, just because we want the edging that we're putting on to really blend in nicely. It, we always try to match up the color and blend the edges as best as possible, but every now and then, sometimes we get this odd color that's just, it's off just just a hint and in order not to make it stand out so much we just just in case always try to sand all around the edges as much as possible so right now what I'm using here it's called Urad I'll show you the jar in just a second now Urad is considered to be one of those quick shine products in other words I don't recommend using it for a shine on boots or shoes there are other products that I would recommend a little bit more but let me grab it here. So there's the jar there. That's your ad. And it's good stuff, definitely. But the problem is that when you got a full grain leather that's nice quality, the leather doesn't absorb it properly. And then you're just caking on a lot of the harder waxes because even though this stuff is a cream, uh, once the uh, solvent that they use in here evaporates, that hard wax hardens quite a bit and it's going to shine nicely but as soon as your toe bends or flexes right in that area i don't want to grab that quite yet and flex it but once it bends or flexes right here those waxes crack immediately but at this point uh, this is the right foot so i did this one first gave it a few minutes to try so now i'm going to go ahead and buff it up and apply a little extra pressure to darken it up slightly um See, that's the other thing is when we go with a lighter color, when we're on the machine afterwards, it's going to darken up a little bit. So I don't want to go straight to the dark colors. Unless it's a dark brown or a black, then that's simple and easy. But when it's one of these lighter colors, depending on the pressure we apply on the wheel, will um, darken it because there are obviously waxes and polishes in basically embedded in, this, in the horse hair here and also the burning aspect as well of the friction so that will drastically change the color too so it takes that fine touch to get it just right but let me go ahead and get things going So there's that one. I'm gonna grab the other one, and this will just kind of show you a little bit. So there's not too much difference. You can see that the bottom one, the one that I haven't buffed yet, is a little bit lighter, where the top one that I already buffed is just a hint darker and it's more shiny as well. So that kind of gives you an idea that buffing is very important at the end whether it's the soles or the uppers we get some people that ask us well i bought cream polish for my shoes but my shoes aren't shiny well did you buff them well and they say well i didn't know i was supposed to buff it yes buffing is a must if you want it to be shiny so let me go ahead and finish out this one real quick and we'll meet you back at the workbench all right everyone so got them all taken care of there so this is the Vibram Explosion heels and Vibram Explosion sole protectors here. You can see there that tread pattern. It's got interesting pattern, almost like one area has got really fine at pattern. The other one's kind of blown up as if something's trying to push through, almost like this interesting 3D effect. In other words, from the side view, this is a bit of a thinner sole. It doesn't stand out all that much or anything like that. So. If you're ever concerned about, well, how's it going to look from the side view? I've had a few people ask me, that's what it looks like right there. Especially when you got a matching heel and everything together, it works out great. But otherwise, yeah, it, there's uh, other soles obviously out there, other sole protectors. There's heavier, thicker ones. Uh, there's some that are even thinner as well. But there's a number of variants and options. All of those you can find on our website, including these ones. Uh, through the website, you can order either just the sole protector service that we provide. It's not the protector soles, protective soles themselves. It's the overall service. Or you could do it with the heel combination as well. Um, Otherwise, if you're local here, swing on by anytime or over here in Denver and uh, 
If you have any questions or comments, please keep them short, leave them down below. Otherwise, if it's a longer question, either please call, swing by, or shoot us an email. Uh, we are trying to get back on track with our emails. We got a little overloaded with a number of emails, uh, so trying to get through all of them, and same thing with the comments as well. But otherwise, uh, I'll grab his bottle here. Also, don't forget to check out Stranahan's if you're here in the Denver area. Uh, they'll be doing tours. I don't know when exactly, but when they start doing them, I'm definitely going to be checking it out. And uh, I highly recommend you do as well. Otherwise, give them some love and attention on their Instagram as well. And uh, check out their website. We've got some cool information on there. And uh, to all of you watching, Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button because obviously with YouTube's algorithm, it helps our channel grow, especially if you're watching the videos from start to finish. It especially helps as well. YouTube's been crazy about their weird algorithms. I don't know what the whole details are. All I know is that I'm supposed to say thumbs up are good for us. They help the channel. Uh, watching the whole video helps as well. And uh, obviously, as always, subscribing helps significantly and sharing too share the video so this is kind of a more simple repair nothing too fancy but i thought i'd show it off it's been a little while since i've shown any kind of sole protector work especially on a pair of men's shoes uh, or boots in this case uh, check out rm williams if you're not familiar with them phenomenal boots that come out of australia very well worth it these things will last you for many years and uh, otherwise we'll see you next time